Now, were the Crips already established at that point? The Crips yeah. been established since yeah. the 70s. Since yeah. yeah. the 70s. That. Way okay. before that. And you guys were Nutty Block? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We, back in the 70s, we were neighborhood block Crips. But was our hood about. went through a lot of transitions. Different transitions, yeah. yeah. You know? Okay, so when you were a kid, what was it? Neighborhood. Neighborhood block, block Crip. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how old were you when you first got affiliated, Tracer? This all my life. My grandma, it's our, it's our street. This my mom and my dad. I can show you my birth certificate. My mother and my father, both addresses on the same app on the same street. So okay. it was before my time, you know what I mean? So you were just born into it. That's mm-hmm. it. Okay. That's it. So you get older. At what point did you start getting kind of active? Uh, active is a, is a different word because it's like where, you, where we came from, you had, you had to just be active just to have the friends you had. Mm-hmm. You couldn't even go nowhere if, you wasn't, if that wasn't what it was. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't, you wouldn't even be outside with us. You know what I mean? So, and that don't mean you had to be tough. That don't mean you had to be, ki- but you had to be prepared yeah, and be p- willing to do it, to participate <laughs> without no fear. You know what I mean? No shame of what you did. So it, mm-hmm. it's, I can take you back all the way to elementary with me. You know what I mean? To third grade, writing on walls and, and that's where I'm from. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and got people that can live it to testify to it. You know what I mean? So we go back that far. That we were in elementary with khakis on and sweatshirts with our names on it and all. You know what I mean? Huh. Without, without, without our mother even realizing that we mm-hmm. already then signed up for this life. You well, know what I mean? think what it was back then, it was, the violence and all that wasn't there yet. Do you understand no. what I'm saying? It was like, it was fighting, you know, sticks. Somebody might get stabbed, It was things to fear. You saw death. You, yeah, you knew but what it was, like but it that. wasn't like it, it wasn't wasn't like, out of like control. it is now. So I don't think our parents back then, right. they didn't think it, they didn't see it as a big, because they was all our friends. It was yeah. like we was hanging with strangers. Yeah, you know exactly. What I mean? Well, the, the crack hadn't really hit. Yeah, 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 at that point. And the big money wasn't coming yet. That's mm-hmm. what started to bring the bigger guns and Absolutely. the bigger violence. And I think I think I interviewed Big U. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys saw that interview. Yeah, but He I was did. saying that like what he started seeing was just a different level of guns. Yeah, it was called Ready Rock in the beginning. It was called, yeah, it was called. It, yeah. it, it, was, it was it was a lot of different names. And so when it when it actually hit was like eighty three. And I came back home in 84, and we went from being able to just, and it, it, it changed it because two things happened major. The, uh, um, the influx of guns and the different kind of guns, and then. Like the automatics. And the automatics, because like yeah. we hadn't even seen automatics. We weren't even having no automatics then. And especially like, what, the, the uh, most, the, we was we was inflamed by the nine millimeter from the movie that came from New York was um, King of New York mm. when um, Lawrence Fishburne had the nine millimeters and the King of New York we was like oh that <laughs> what the you know what I mean because we come from the Clint Eastwood era the the pistols and the four five and the magnums so when crack came all the different movies came that influenced the culture at the same time. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. this is one thing this is one thing I could tell you about. So I heard from an OG that they used to find barrels of guns along the train tracks yeah. just sitting there, Uzis, and like fully automatic guns, bro, like just sitting there for people to find, little kids in the ghetto throwing rocks on the train tracks, what they do, stumble across a whole barrel of guns. So you think the government Absolutely. left them there? I mean, we had the train track run right through all, through that, from South Central, we know crack SLA, was made County, in USC, Carson, right? all the way down. They made crack in USC in the college. Really? In the lab, yes. Okay. And they experimented with it there before they put it in the street. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Because the USC is kind of in the hood. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Everything. Yeah. I mean, they was experimenting. We were so put it like this. We were so at the at the beginning of, of the crack era. We were so in the in the midst of it that as kids, I'm 12 and 13. We didn't even know. We just knew that we saw something white. That they like put shit. on their tongue and they buy it and they like it, right? So when we wanted to, if my first time buying drugs, I had to go and create this white little substance. So when they put it on their tongue, mm-hmm. and it was, it turned out to be candle wax. Yeah, or gel. I used or gel, <laughs> candle wax, and baking soda, right? Mm-hmm. With Tori Cannon had me and my, one, of my, one of my cousins. We thought this, thought this shit up real clear, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Okay. I created some rock, ready rock, off of some candle wax, some or gel, and some motherfucking baking soda. Okay, went well, on the corner, made forty dollars, and went and spent that and flipped that, and, and came back to so I made my way to have a track, and, that, and it kept okay. going. Okay, well, what happened when the 
when the crackhead came back after smoking your Oreo. Joe. That's right. I'm going to tell you a story. real life story. This crackhead who I ended up selling it to, right, was basically like an uncle who was a doctor who lived at the end of the block. His, uh, his sister was a, was a probation officer. That worked so, at LP? That, that worked in Los Padrinos, mm -hmm. where I just came back from. This is somebody who calls me her nephew. So I knew if I sell it to him, he can't really complain because he don't want them to know that he smokes drugs. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know That's what I'm saying? That's, and I was that young and understood that at that age. You know what I mean? Having to feed my little brothers. But my mother was in prison at that moment. Your mother was in prison? Yeah, yeah. For what? First time I had attempted, we, murder. attempted murder. We Your ain't gonna talk too prison. much about her story, but because it's all it's a it's a lot to be told. Like, yeah, our story yeah. is real authentic. You know what I mean? Okay, so your mom was in, in jail for attempted murder. How long yeah. was she in for? Three years. Three years. She has six. She only did half though. Yeah, okay. Three so, years yeah. and some change. Yeah. So she she got off easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. For not, self not defense, for that, really. In that day and era, no. And then that day and era, 10 years was life sentences, basically. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? So six years seemed like a That's whole lot. The yeah, the, yeah, the RICO know? Acts came later yeah. and, and yeah, everything else Especially when like you're that. a single mother and you got three young, you know, four, four young sons teams, on yeah. the streets that, you know what I mean? And you know ain't nobody going to do for them like you going to do for them but them, you know what I mean? So three years okay. meant, it meant a lot. And it still does to this day to her, mm -hmm. you know what I mean?